Today, flight simmers. Here we are at Pico Airport in the middle of the Atlantic off the coast of Spain on a small island. We're flying the Textron Aviation Beechcraft Bonanza G36 today. And here it is, beautifully rendered by Microsoft Flight Sim. It's got the Garmin G1000 Aviation Suite in it. So it's a beautiful aircraft and we've got our co-pilot on board and in my settings I have the co-pilot responsible under assistance options to handle the uh, comm settings for the radio and also transponder setting and also to handle conversations with air traffic control. So you as a pilot can just focus on flying the aircraft. So for our flight plan, we just used a little nav map and a uh, little nav map uh, is a free software you can download and it comes with a manual on how to use it. But basically what you can do is select airports as your destination and select an airport as your departure. It will automatically connect the airports. Then you can go up here and uh, Click on this and select your uh, departure or runway. And you can go here to select your destination runway. I picked runway 15. There's a lot of information that comes with a little nav map. For example, if I hold my mouse over the airport icon here, that little blue dot, it tells me uh, whether there's a preferred runway, it tells you what the winds are and also gives you the elevation of the runway it's 169 feet above sea level it gives you uh, with this feather if you turn this on this feather symbol it'll give you the runway now it's centering the aircraft because i have this on and it'll also create a little trail so if you want to look at this destination runway you can see that the frequency is 109.90 for an ils approach 149 uh, magnetic north and also over here I've set it for IFR right here and 7,000 feet because we're flying uh, an odd number for our altitude and uh, we're flying um, west to east. Um, here's the flight plan it created. So we're headed to Lagos Airport on this little island so it'll be a rather pretty flight today. So this elevation view will tell you about your um, wide slope um, that uh, elevation that you have to get at to enter this glide slope in order to capture the glide slope for an IOS approach and landing. This view uh, overhead here gives you an ILS view which is a horizontal view. So here's your glide slope view vertical and it's a um, Looks like it's a three degree uh, slope into that runway. So let's go back and get this aircraft started. I'm going to go inside the aircraft, get ready to fly. And these guys aren't in the way, so we're going to taxi out here. So let's see if we can start this thing up using the checklist that they provide. Before starting engine, make sure your parking brake is on. So it's it's off, so which means that uh, you got to put it on. Um, avionics that should be off. Fuel selector. Um, by clicking on this little eyeball here, it's going to take you, if you don't know where all these things are, take you to it. But we've got it set now to the left main tank here. And uh, for our battery and alternators, here they are. I'm just going to turn those on. Porta approach NASAR now we can hear our to Lodges control. Control. ready to copy. Frequency is 127.9 or squawk tree 
Nasser 616 cleared to Lodge's airport as filed. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Departure is 127 decimal niner squawk tree 172. Clearance void 30 minutes from now. Okay, so they're saying 5,000 feet to climb to for starters. Alright. So I'm just going to show you what I'm using here to fly this. I'm using the uh, Thrustmaster joystick, so I've got buttons programmed here. This one will turn on and off the parking brake. This is for regular braking flaps. This gives, centers my view again on uh, you know the screen. And uh, this is uh, trim right here. These two are trim up and down. So you can set them to whatever you want. This, this one's set for spoilers. Um, also, I'm using the uh, TWCS Throttle Thrustmaster. So that's my autopilot on and off button. And these various buttons, you can program them however you want. By moving it uh, back and forth will um, adjust your throttle. So it works quite well. And I'm also using a mouse and a keyboard. So let's take a look at getting this thing started. Our fuel mixture has to be rich. For takeoff, our prop needs to be max. See if I can get you so you can see that a little better there. Throttle full, and your fuel boost pump on until flow peaks. So I'll show you where that's at. So we're going to put this up. Okay, so now I can turn that off. And throttle, open half an inch. And magneto. I'm going to turn the magnetos on here. And then back to both. Let's go outside. Make sure this thing isn't rolling. Shaking a little bit. So we're going to adjust our throttle now. See if we can get it up around 1,000 to 1,200. In between there. So that's good. And then check our oil pressure. Looks good. So we're ready to go. All right. So I'm going to go over to this screen here. take a look at that. Uh, let's go to after starting engine. So our avionics now has to be turned on. Our lights. Let me just get this out of the way for you here. So we can turn on our strobe light. Our nav light. Taxi obviously. And turn on our landing lights. I'm going to turn on the flood and panels, especially if it's dark out at night. You're going to need to turn those on. You won't be able to see what you're doing. So, fuel boost, you want to make sure it's off. Just pull down on that one. And then the parking brake, as soon as we release, release this, it's, the aircraft will start to roll. So, And then we're going to be taxiing. So, let's just uh, go outside the aircraft for a second. I'm going to take the parking brake off. You can see where we have to go. I have these blue chevrons turned on. Uh, sort of a taxi ribbon that helps you find your way to the gate or to the room where you're supposed to depart from. So I'm just going to take the parking brake off. I'm going to head over here and stop and we're going to set some stuff up for this flight. Okay, I'm just going to put the parking brake on for a second. Alright. 
So we make sure our flight controls are okay, our nav lights are on, our taxi lights are on, our altimeter, we're going to set that. Okay, so let's go inside the aircraft, set the altimeter. Uh, I'll press control 1 will give us this primary flight display. So there's a map over here if I want to get this engine information off, I can scroll over to here and it says this is the multifunctional display screen. And if I hit that or hit enter, then this screen will come up. And now we have our instrument uh, gauges here to monitor, our manifold pressure, our RPMs, fuel flow, oil temperature, oil pressure. So you want to monitor this. Here's our battery voltage and our fuel quantity. You can see the right and left tank are evenly balanced right now. So let's scroll back here and now this portion is off the primary flight display and our map is showing up because I have map turned on here. So for CDI you want to have that uh, click on that and it'll change it. So you want it on GPS. I want to set the altitude to 5,000, which they said to go to. We had 7,000 for the flight, but anyway, I'll, I'll do what they said, air traffic control for now. We can climb to that other altitude later. So I'm going to put uh, vertical speed on here, turn that on, and I'm going to set us to climb at 1,000 feet per minute, which isn't too aggressive. So right now, we're sitting at this airport and we're heading to this waypoint. It's 2.6 nautical miles and there's the bearing. There's the calm frequency, here's the nav frequency. Now the nav for that runway, remember we looked at it in a uh, little nav map, it was 109.90. So sometimes, little, uh, sometimes Microsoft Flight Sim will have that um, set for you as active. And right now it's on standby on both NAV1 and NAV2. So in order to get it up to NAV1, I'm going to right click on that button right there, the NAV uh, knob, and it moved it up and now highlighted that window. Now to make that active, I have to hit the swap key. If you want to change this, if this isn't accurate, you could change it, for example, to 110 decimal 90, and this one will change the smaller number. Let's go back to 1.9. Okay, so now we're going to swap. So now this is the actual active frequency we want. Here's some heading bugs. So this is our speed gauge. Keep an eye on that to monitor. And this is our altitude. So there's our altitude we've got it set for. Here's what our altitude we're currently sitting at on the runway. And here is the... Um, vertical speed per minute that I've set. There's your barometric pressure. So I'm going to hit Bravo on the keyboard. So it just changed it. So now it says we're sitting at uh, roughly 130 feet. So let's go to little nav map. Zoom in on this. Let's see what uh, the elevation is for this so it says the elevation is 108 feet for this airport. So with our barometric pressure today, it's saying we're at about 130, I think. At any rate, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, some of these other things, this has got suspend right now at SUP, so we're not, the flight plan, plan isn't active at this moment. But let's go over and have a look. So this is a multifunctional display screen. This is the primary flight display. This is the multifunctional display screen. And we can click flight plan on here to bring up our flight plan. And if we right click on this, it'll highlight the waypoint we're going to and you can actually scroll to the various waypoints and you can see your elevations so this has got 6,000 
And when we get near our uh, approach, we're going to go to 3,500 and then 2,000. And then down to runway 15. So before takeoff, we are going to want to turn on our landing lights. Turn off the taxi lights. Strobe lights on. Piton heat as required. I'm going to put on the piton. We won't need prop de-ice unless we run into icing. Uh, the fuel pump, make sure that's off once again. Your cowling flaps as required. So we're going to open up the cowling flaps. So that lets air into the cowling to keep the engine cool during um, takeoff and climbing. Helps cool it. So I'm just going to set that like that. And then once we get up to cruise, we'll, we'll close that. So our trim is set for takeoff. Uh, now, right here, set the TO. Um, that's sort of automatically done at the moment. Uh, I didn't have to adjust that. So that's probably what you'll find when you go into the aircraft. So uh, your propeller uh, pull forward. Let's just bring that up. Just make sure that these are full forward. And your mixture is full rich. So your flaps can be set to zero for normal takeoff. If you're on a short field, uh, you can set them to one. So we're ready to taxi out now and get prepared for a normal takeoff uh, and we'll go through that uh, when we get there. So I've got the parking brake on, I'm going to take it off. So you can see the sock there, wind sock, um, blowing in, on the right hand side, so I'm taking off on the right one right here. So just going to go down here and turn around. I'm not going to bother setting any flaps today because unless it's a short runway, this thing should be able to take off quite nicely. Nasser 616 taking off runway 09 or departure to the east. It's a little tight uh, to turn here, so see what I can do here. 
see if I can get it turned around without going off the runway. I'm just braking a little bit to help with the turn. The aircraft does feel a little bit on the heavy, sluggish side, this aircraft, compared to some of the others, like the King Air, for example. So we're going to line up here. We're going to go inside. And um, got the parking brake on. Let me just show you here. I'm going to turn that on. Right here while we do a few little things here okay so the brakes are set we're going to go full throttle then we're going to release the brakes and we're going to rotate a, I'm going to attempt to at around 65 to 73 knots and then for my climb, I'm going to try and hit about 84, 85 knots for the best angle of climb. And uh, 100 knots will give you the best rate of climb. We're going to retract the uh, gear, landing gear. And that should get us up. And then we'll go through cruising when we get there. So let's just go outside and let you have a look at it from the outside here. trying to line up the angle for you a bit. Alright, so parking brakes on remember, so I'm gonna go full throttle. Just pull back gently on the yoke, get airborne. I'm going to put it on the autopilot. So the autopilot's on now. You can see it's showing up right here. So let's go outside and bring up the landing gear. So the flaps are up. And we are climbing. We set it to 1,000 feet per minute. So now we have to go back inside. Santa Maria Center, Nassar 616, is at 700 feet, climbing 5,000 feet. And I want to hit nav. Nassar 616, Santa Maria Center, altimeter 30 decimal, for flight radar contact, continue. Okay, so, it's on GPS now, autopilot vertical speed up, and we're going to check the altimeter once again. Try and reduce the speed a little bit for a better rate of climb. You can see these speed bugs here are sort of telling you your best rate of climb and your best angle of climb speed. So I'm just going to stay roughly in between those. Take a look outside and see how this thing's doing. 5,000. So you can see the oil temperature there is still okay. Climb and maintain 7,000 feet, Nasser 616. So now we're going to 7,000. Okay. So I'm going to set this to 7,000. There we go. Back. 
back over here. Get in be I'm getting in between here. So close to a hundred, which is a gonna be our best rate of line if we can hit a hundred. Let's back off there a bit. So I'm just using my throttle to get there. Once we get to our cruising altitude, then we can look at our uh, cruising checklist. I'm getting a little flashing here because our RPMs are right on the edge there. When you're climbing, if the temperature looks okay, you could um, leave your cowl flaps uh, closed I, I, if you didn't have any temperature issues, but I'm just going to leave it right about there for now. This is a little uh, duster for your internal temperature. It doesn't look, doesn't look like it's operative. This would be digital control for your climbing control inside. These are standby gauges you have over here as well. Just uh, So this is for setting your barometric pressure, but I just use B on the keyboard for doing that. That's your heading bug. If you want to line that, uh, this is your heading dial. If you want to line that heading bug up, just right click on it, it'll go to the top. So let's just go over here and have a look at here. Yeah, so here's some standby gauges showing you your um, your speed in knots and your altitude. We're climbing here. 6,000, we just hit 6,000. Alright. This is an emergency switch that if you want to send out a signal, you can earn that. That's sort of like a distress signal if you go down. Hopefully you never have to use that. That's a uh, display uh, backup. Here's your calm settings. So we're getting up to 7,000, so let's just go down below here. And we can close that calming flap panel. Cut our speed back a bit. And I'm just going to Reduce the props and lean the fuel. Try and hold that speed around 120. Prop RPMs are pretty low there right now. Just increase them a bit. Let's see where we are on the lab map. Okay, 
Okay, so we can see it's not following this flight plan. So let's go back inside and see what see what we can take a look at here. So on here it's following the flight plan. So let me just show you. Sometimes things get switched a little bit. Looks like we're heading to this waypoint right here. S O L G I. So let's take a look at the map. Yeah, so why it's not flying directly to it, I'm not sure, but let's just uh, wait a few minutes and give the aircraft a chance to. Ah, okay, here we go. This happens sometimes. It's got suspended. So if I click on this, it should get us back on track. So let me go control and bring this up and hit this. Alrighty, there we go. Now it's back on GPS here. It was just basically the autopilot was flying in a straight line there. So occasionally with this aircraft, I find that does happen. It loses its uh, heading on the flight plan. So let's just go look at the that map again here. So just keep an eye on that. Now here's the next waypoint it's going to for little nav map. So let's have a look at our flight plan on the actual aircraft. So it says it's going to go to this waypoint next. I assume. So let's go have a look at where that is. So that's up here, clog on. So the aircraft is probably going to fly up to here. Going to one three two decimal one five Nasser six one six. Santa Maria Center Nasser six one six seven thousand feet. Nasser six one six Santa Maria Center altimeter. Okay, so we're heading to this waypoint now, which is up here. Uh, let's have a look at what they said. Uh, altimeter. Okay, we have to reset the altimeter. Just press B for Bravo on the keyboard. And you'll see it change right here. Okay, so that's set correctly. And we're told that we can discontinue at our current altitude. So let's... Uh, Let's add this to the little nav map flight plane so everything looks more copacetic. All right, let's bring up the little nav map. Okay, so here's that waypoint right up here. So all I have to do is click before um, top of the center somewhere around here and just drag it up to here and kind of highlight that and, and it'll actually change the little nav map flight plan. So now we can see the aircraft uh, seems to be following the little nav map as well. So this was added by Osipo Software or Microsoft Flight Sim. It just added this waypoint. We didn't ask for it. It's just a better approach for this runway. So that's probably stuff that's in the software for all these different airports. So I find that often the aircraft will do like a an approach that you haven't really created yourself a little nav map, but it still works. Like the aircraft may fly out, turn around, and come back in. In this case, it looks like it's just going to fly to this and then turn. So what we have to do is keep an eye on and make sure it just doesn't keep flying straight there. And uh, if it does, uh, then we'll do that same thing. If it gets suspended, we'll hit that button or fly direct to uh, this waypoint right here. E P O D I. Okay, so right now everything looks okay. 
So it's a matter of monitoring uh, your manifold pressure, your RPMs, uh, your fuel flow, and you see the fuel here, the quantity of fuels get imbalanced. Because, uh, and, you, and sometimes you get an alert that there's a fuel imbalance with this uh, Garmin system. So if you see this getting out of balance, it means the autopilot is adjusting for it. So you don't really want to drain that left tank. So let's take a look at our cruise checklist. So for our cruise checklist, we're going to have throttle uh, as required. Your propeller RPMs, uh, you can have them uh, up to 2,700 RPMs. So you can increase them if you want. Uh, let's just go down here and increase them a bit. And your speed, uh, I'm going to get it around uh, 120. I'm just going to cut back a bit here on the throttle. Yeah, for cruising, um, you can have that uh, manifold up to 25 if you want, and your props around 2,500. So it looks pretty good right now. And your fuel mixture should be 20% rich side of EGT peak. Let's just get down here. Fuel mixture. Put it right there for now. Uh, our Kellen flaps, like I told you, we can have those closed now. Make sure they're up. Make sure your parking brake is off for landing. Don't want that on. Fuel selector, um, we're going to change that. Uh, let's just go. Actually, you can change that every 30 minutes during flight just to keep the balance even, and I think it's time to do that. So, don't turn it up here, you'll turn it off. So I'm going to try and see if I can get there. Okay, so. If you scroll with your mouse, you can change it over to the right tank. So let's go have a look at back here again. Okay, so we switched over to the right tank, so that should help uh, balance the fuel in the aircraft from right to left. I think we're flying along looking pretty good here. So this is how you'd hit direct two. Just highlight that. Hit direct two, and then if you hit enter, it'll it'll uh, highlight that and say, "Do you want to activate?" And then you'd hit enter again, and it would activate to directly to that waypoint. So if you did get off course and you wanted to fly directly to this waypoint, that's how you do it. But we don't have to do that right. Now so I'm not going to bother. Let's go outside and have a look, because I did say this was supposed to be a beautiful flight. There is the distant island we took off from and flew over. Let's take a look at the little map back and see where we're at. Okay, so we just flew over this island here, took off from that one, and here's the island we're headed to. There's the name of it. The nice thing about the map app shows you the names of towns, what the street layout looks like, and uh, obviously highlights uh, little uh, landmarks that are uh, of interest. These are your waypoints here. These are the triangles. You can turn them on and off at this button. So I just leave them on. This will show your. Um, 
and show your VOR stations. You can turn the compass off around your aircraft. And this, like I said, shows a little trail we took. A dotted line, and this centers the aircraft. Actually, this shows the aircraft to be on, and this sector is the aircraft, this one right here. If you don't have that on, it's where you scroll your mouse down. So for our approach, we're going to have our landing lights on. Our fuel uh, selector should be to our fullest tank. Our counting flaps, um, we're going to open them up if we need to, uh, just to cool the engine. And the fuel mixture should be rich. The propeller should be full forward. And we're going to check the altimeter. So that would be for our approach. So let's uh, go inside the aircraft and check the altimeter. Okay, it didn't change. I'm just trying to keep my speed here. I'm sort of a cruising speed. I'll be around a hundred. Let me just uh, try and adjust that a wee bit. Fine. That white zone there is where you're going to be able to put down your flaps and your landing gear safely. So I'm just going to cruise along here at about 125. So it's not going to hurt if you go a little faster as long as you don't get into uh, over speed. This is real-time real weather, if I didn't mention that. So whatever the time of day is over there, that's what it looks like. And it's probably uh, getting uh, late in the afternoon over there. In North America right now, it's around 11.30, so this is probably five hours. advanced from our time here, somewhere around there uh, soon. I still can't see the island we're heading to, so we may be getting into some cloudy conditions here. But the aircraft is performing very nicely. Which you have a better look at us sitting inside here. There's your exhaust pipes. Everything looks very real. You get your pitots here. You know, right here, sending information to our flight director and autopilot. So, you turn the pitot in on to keep these from freezing up in cold weather. Because if they freeze up, they're not going to be able to send uh, accurate information to your uh, flight director and your uh, instruments inside the aircraft, such as your speed gauge and your altitude gauge that uh, help your readings. It just sees up. I have noticed it sees up in cold weather. You don't have too tough to So, everything's looking good. Let's see if we can go in the back of this thing. If I press Alt and my arrow keys, I should be able to turn it on. Descend and maintain 6,000 nope. feet. Descend and 6,000 feet. Descend and maintain 6,000 feet, NASA 616. Okay. I'm just going to pay attention to that for now instead of playing around. 
6,000. Okay, so I just set that to 6,000. So I have to uh, turn on vertical speed down. So right now it's descending 500. Okay, so I'm going to go down with 4,000. Okay, so we'll go over here and try and make sure we don't get into over speed because we're descending. So I'm using my Alt key to sort of line it up here, and then all uh, and the arrow keys left and right, and I use the mouse to turn around. So that's about as far back as I can go. You can uh, zoom a little bit. So you can see there's a couple seats back here for passengers. So they want us to expedite, eh? All right. Let's see what we can do here. Can increase uh, our descent. All right, it's uh, gone off here, so I'll turn that on again. Down, down, down. Yeah, so they uh, asked us to expedite. So this turned off. It could be because I was pushing a few buttons to show you the back of the aircraft. That, that might have been what caused that. shortly and then they, they'll be happy. I'll just increase the descent right there a little bit. So this will level off and hold at that altitude. Make sure you check your barometric pressure if they're uh, telling you you're not at the right altitude. I'm going to click on here. Didn't change at all. I clicked on B Bravo on the keyboard. Or like I said you can set it here but it's a little more uh, tricky shall we say doing that to change it. Yeah, here's your barometric, I guess. No, that's a calm. This would be here. Course heading and barrel, right here. All right, watching my airspeed. So I'm waiting to see if this thing is going to turn towards the airport. Wow, it's a little overcast here today. Cloudy weather. Let's take a look at the bad map. Okay, we're coming up to this waypoint here. So we really should be turning side have a look. Okay. You can range in and out using this range button. So it's showing right now that we're headed to that waypoint. We should then turn and head to this. So all our gauges look good here. Just keep monitoring them. One, two, three, decimal so we're on three, the right six, one, six. Goodbye. Lodges approach, Nassar, so 616, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, feet. Nassar, 616, lodges approach, altimeter, tree zero, decimal, four, seven, radar contact, continue to call on. Okay, so our barometric pressure is set correct from what ATC just told us. Three, zero, decimal, four, seven. They have radar contact. Tank is set correctly. All right. Go here and range out. All right. I'm waiting to see if this thing's going to turn. Towards uh, our next uh, waypoint. you can see is e potty and we're coming up to this
we're actually four nautical miles from that from this waypoint here. So make sure GPS is on, autopilot, altitude is holding. Um, confirm that we have the right uh, active frequency for the runway. Watch our airspeed and our altitude. Make sure our transponder is set. Basically, those are the things we want to monitor. If you turn this on, you'll be able to hear if we pick up the uh, localizer. You can hear that right now, that little beeping sound. That's the signal coming off, the ILS AV1 frequency signal. So we're actually picking up the signal right now, but we haven't, the aircraft hasn't switched to LOC here. I'm just going to cut back a little bit on the speed. I'm just watching here, see what's going to happen. Nest Air 616 descend and maintain 3,500 feet. Okay, 3,500. Descend and maintain 3,500 so feet, Nest Air 616. So you can see I'm using the altitude dial. And I'm going to go vertical speed down. We've got one nautical mile to go to this waypoint, and I know I can hear that nav one frequency. So autopilot, flight director, heading, altitude, nav mode, V nav. This is your approach button that we're going to hit once we pick up the. Uh, okay, so we should be turning here, and it's flying straight. So it just suspended right there for some reason. Just click on that. Remember that happened earlier? Make sure your nav's on, that it didn't go off. Your autopilot and flight director, and now the aircraft is turning. So we would have just kept flying straight uh, with this aircraft for some reason. But now you see it is going to the right. Uh, and pretty soon we should be able to pick up the LOC um, frequency for the runway on five. I'm watching my airspeed here. Take you outside so you can see what we got here. Yeah, it's a good day for an ILS approach and landing into this. Uh, looks like we're going to be going into some clouds. But we are descending quite nicely here. We've got to get down to uh, 3,500 feet, you can see here. So the aircraft is uh, coming in quite nicely. So. I suspect it's going to switch to LOC very shortly to the localizer. Okay, so I'll bring up a little nav map for you. Remember, the uh, this is the localizer frequency for the runway, and this is the approach frequency. We need to get down into that feather there, and we need to fly into this feather from this horizontal perspective. So we're lining up pretty nicely. in the way, in the way of mountains or anything. So watch your airspeed. So for descent, um, for an ISL approach um, at about 3,000 feet uh, altitude, uh, you want to be doing about 110. So we're going to put our landing gear and set our flaps to 1. I want to do about 110. I'm waiting for this to switch to LOC. So at about 3 to 2 nautical miles to go, I'm going to set the flaps to 2. I'll try and reduce my airspeed to 80 uh, knots. So, so I'm going to go from 110 to 90 and then to 80 just before landing. And at runway threshold, uh, put your throttle to idle and slowly flare the aircraft. So we picked up the localizer. Now I'm going to put on approach. 
So this green and diamond here, when it gets down to here, we're going to pick up or capture the glide slope. That's what should happen. So I can turn this off now. That's that nav frequency, just letting us know that we could pick it up. So there we go, just flash green GS, which is the glide slope. It means it's captured the glide slope. So now it's going to start descending on its own. So remember I said I want to go for about 100 down to 90 down to 80 for landing. So let's go outside the aircraft for now and put down the uh, landing gear. Flaps to one. For now, and I'm going to try and hold it around 90 knots. So the um, the cowling uh, uh, engine cowling flaps should be up or closed. You only would have them for takeoff and climbing. So that allows cool air into the cowling flaps so, to cool the engine. So you don't need to worry about that right now. So I'm going to watch my airspeed here. It's getting a little slow while I was showing you that. Take your eye off that uh, speed gauge for a minute. Things can go crazy. Start stalling. Anyways, I'm around 90. Just take the outside and see if we can see anything. Yeah. It is a cloudy day here. And we look like we're, well, the runway looks like it's um, encased in clouds. So I'm holding this around 90. I'm going to put the flaps down full. I'm going to get a little closer and reduce my. Uh, airspeed to 80 knots for landing and I'll see how I do. I'm going to try and uh, take it off autopilot and uh, land it manually. Hopefully it's not too much of a crosswind here. Let's just have a look. The wind is uh, coming in from this direction at uh, 16 to 17 knots. You can see that. All right. This throttle is working pretty good holding my uh, airspeed right now. Take you inside. So once again, um, your airspeed would be 110, reduce it down to 90. One set of flaps down. The sink rate is three uh, degrees right now on this glide slope. And at three to two nautical miles out, I'm going to put a second set of flaps down. Right now we're five nautical miles out, it looks like. And I'm going to reduce my speed to 80 when we get uh, 3 nautical miles, like I said. So it's a little hard to see right here, but right now it's 4 nautical miles out. Let's go outside so you can see what it's a little clearer now. We're getting below the clouds. Okay, we're cleared to land. We could actually six, wait six. until about well, right now to put down the landing gear and that first set of flaps if we wanted to. But we are cleared to land and I'm holding that speed pretty good right here. You can see it's a little windy buffeting the aircraft. I mean you can change your settings in the system to have the wind off but I like it on. It makes it a little more challenging and a little more realistic. So let's go inside the aircraft. Okay, so now I can put down another set of flaps and reduce my speed to 80, or try and hold it at 80. 
So just put the flaps down full. And you can see it immediately affects your air speed here. So you're going to have to throttle on it to keep it to the not get the You don't want to get down in this red, you'll stall. If you stall one, it'll start screaming. So as we get closer, I will take off the autopilot and manually land the aircraft. If you want to improve your view a bit, you can hit the spacebar on the keyboard. And sort of like you're sitting up in your seat a little bit higher, but this is not a bad view here. So holding that airspeed as best I can to around 80. This wind. If you're lined right up here with that green arrow the needle's not left or right in the center of it, then you're right on line. This aircraft autopilot is trying to hold our line. And you can see here, we've got two white, two red lights here assisting us, telling us we're just right on our flight, so perfect. So I can take the autopilot off now and just land it. Remember to cut back on your airspeed a little bit as you get close to landing. Just gentle touch down and get to the center line here. And I'm just braking. So bring up your flaps. Turn next taxiway. Cut back on your throttle, of course, to high hold. Let me see where I can turn here. Yeah, the uh, there's the holes off to the right, and over here on the left we have uh, the airport. Right. Let's see if I can get a, a gate. Taxi. I'm not sure where that is. Little nav map does help when it comes to stuff like this. I want to just zoom in, let it center up for us. Just close this too. Okay. So I can scroll with my mouse. So it looks like here. So we're working exit right here. Try contacting ground and see what happens here. See if we can get a gate. Okay. So, I'm just going to put the parking brake on for a second. And go inside the aircraft. So after landing, we want to make sure our flaps are up. Our cowling flaps are closed. The lights and make sure we put that. We can turn these off. Strobe lights and PTOT off, landing lights off. I'm going to turn the panel and flood lights off too. The nav light we can turn off. PTOT heat off. Alright, um, we can see if we can find a gate now. So let 
me just uh, see if I can contact ground. Okay, request taxi to the gates. Lodges ground, Nassar 616, request taxi to the gate. All right, so we're going to do that. Let's bring up a little nav map so we can see where we're going here as well. Um, it's fun to always follow your... If you zoom in on the airport like this, you can actually see where your gate is. So let's start. Uh, take the parking brake off here. And let's start uh, taxiing. Can you put those flashlights down, please? I'm going to go a little further, but they always bring you in too close. Close to being dangerous. Let's go outside and have a look. I'll put the parking brake on. I'll show you what I mean. That's pretty close. <laughs> Just about run into the tug. Okay. Uh, so here we are. Good thing we didn't hit anyone with a prop, but I just followed his instructions. Okay, let's um, go inside and shut this thing down. So, um, for parking and shutdown, you're going to want to put your park parking brake on, which I already did. Your lights need to be off. Your avionics need to be off. Your throttle needs to be at about a thousand RPMs while you're sitting here. And your mixture needs to be to cut off. Your magnetos uh, need to be off. Your alternator and batteries need to be turned on. So let's go through that. First of all, let's just check the bar parking brake to make sure that's on. And let's check our lights. Yeah, so they need to be all turned off. I'll turn off the taxi lights. All right. So the avionics uh, needs to be off right here. Put that off. Your throttle, uh, like I said, you want that around a thousand. Let's see what we got of that right now. Well. It's close to a thousand. I'm just going to leave it right around there. My keyboard. Let's get that right down. There we go. And uh, the props here, we can we can put that right down as well. Your magneto, we're going to turn off. This cowling flap needs to be up. Uh, so let's go back to control four. And our magneto here, let's turn that off. All right. 
and your batteries uh, that'd be the final thing uh, the fuel tank you could uh, I'm just going to leave it the way it is yeah, it's not showing up here that's okay there it is right there I'm just going to leave it set like that I don't think it would hurt if you turned it off but uh, it's okay to leave it where it's at there these uh, battery switches are off and the alternators go off now oh, let's take a look at the aircraft you can see everything shut down and she's just sitting here waiting for us to get out It'd be nice if we could open the doors on this thing but uh, there isn't any, really any uh, latches that highlight uh, and let you open up a door and you can't get to the back I do not believe so see there's a latch there but it'd be nice if that's open it'd be nice if they worked it'd be a little fun to do it but anyway well there's a big aircraft coming in uh, thank you very much for joining me I uh, really appreciated uh, you watching the video if you stuck with me through the whole thing uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, and if you found it helpful, please subscribe. I have other videos, and uh, once again, have a great day, Microsoft Flight Simmers, and I'll catch you next time. Beautiful here. Nice, warm day.